Hi all, welcome to Code of Action. In this video, we'll discuss all you need to know about CRUD operations in Node.js CPI with MongoDB. I'm sure you will find this tutorial entertaining, so please watch till the end of the video. As a follow up to this video, I'll be building the front end client side app for this same API in frameworks such as Angular or React or even JavaScript render engines like Handlebars. So let's get started with creating the node project inside this folder directory here. For that, we have to open the command prompt from this same folder. To do that, inside this file explorer path directory, just replace this path with the command cmd, then hit enter. Thereby, the command prompt is opened from the same directory as that of this folder here. Now, first of all, let me create a new folder called server. So here we have the new folder server. Now let's navigate into the folder server. Inside the folder, we can create the Node.js project using this command npm init. During this process, it will ask some questions for initial configuration of the application. First of all, we have the package name. Inside this application, we'll be dealing with employee details. So the package name would be something like employee API. Keep the version as it is, no description entry point, which is the root JavaScript file for the Node.js project. I will keep it as index.js. Keep hitting enter if you are okay with default values. So here we have the configuration that we have just provided and it will be saved inside this file package.json. Now to confirm this configuration, press Y for yes, hit enter. That's it. Now here we are inside this folder server. Now let's open the same inside the VS Code editor. For that we can use this command code then period. Boom. So here we have the brand new Node.js project. Now before going forward, let me show you the folder structure of the application that we are going to build. So I will create this text file here, app structure. And then I will paste this app structure here. So inside this project, we'll be having folders, controllers, middleways, models, and services. And here we have the root JavaScript file index.js and there will be a separate JavaScript file db in order to establish a connection with the db. Now let's create this root JavaScript file index.js which is the entry point for this application. So here we have the new file index.js. Now let's install the required npm packages into the application. First of all, we have Nordmon. It helps us to restart the application automatically whenever we make changes inside the project directory. Now you can see the corresponding installation command here. Now here is the catch. Instead of installing this package only to the current project, install the package globally with this command here. And thereby you can make use of this tool in future Node.js projects also. I already installed this package globally into my machine. And then we have this popular express package. Here we have the corresponding installation command. And then after that we have body parser, which act as a middleware to pass incoming request bodies. And in order to work with the MongoDB, this Mongoose package is really helpful. In order to install the packages, you can make use of the terminal from VS Code like this. But when I work with Node.js projects, I often use an external command prompt like this. So first of all, to clear these previous commands, use this command cls. First of all, make sure that we are inside the Node.js project directory. Now in order to hide this lengthy folder path, we can make use of this command prompt, then $g. This command only work with command prompt, not with PowerShell. Now hit enter. Now let's install those four packages. First of all, Nordmon. As I already mentioned, this package is already installed into my machine. If you have installed this package globally into your machine, you don't have to install it in each of the Node.js project. I'm installing this package again because I want to save this package in the dependencies of the project. And thereby, when you download this project from the GitHub repository, it will be automatically installed if someone is not installed by globally. Then after that, we have Express body parser, then mongoose, hit enter. So here we have successfully installed those four packages. You could see the same inside this package.json file. Now let's pause for a moment. I would strongly recommend you to go through the video description where I will be posting common error bugs with their solution. And also let me know if you are stuck anywhere during this development so that I can provide quick fixes or I would come up with a better solution next time.
Now inside the root index.js, let's start this server. For that, we have to import the express package. Then as usual, we'll be creating a variable called app. Into it, we'll assign the value returned from this express method. Now in order to start this server, we just need to call this method listen. As a first parameter, we have to pass the port number, let it be 3000 and then we can pass a callback like this. It will be invoked when the server is successfully started from the given port number. So inside this method, we'll print this server started at 3000. In order to verify the same, let's run this application. So here we have the command prompt from the same project directory. While developing an OGS application, I will place both of this IDE and command prompt in parallel. So I will do this. Now let's float this command prompt onto the right side. Now we could see both the source code and the server log in a single screen. Now inside the command prompt, let's hide this path. In order to run this application, normally we do this node the name of the root file which is index.js. Since we have installed nodemon, we can use that here so that we don't have to restart the application after each change we make inside this folder or project directory here. Hit enter. Boom. So here we have successfully started the server at the given port number. Now let's import the package body parser. We'll use the package to convert the request body into a given format. That will be then inside the middleware. For that, we can call this use method. So this is where we configure middleware. So from this body parser, we just need to call this method JSON. So whatever request comes into the application, its body will be converted to the JSON object. Now before going forward, let's set up a database in MongoDB. In our YouTube channel community, I have conducted a poll on regarding which approach would you like to choose to work with MongoDB. Whether you like local MongoDB server or the online MongoDB atlas. Around 60% of votes goes to online MongoDB atlas. So I'll be using online MongoDB atlas for this project. In order to participate in such question and answer sessions, please consider subscribing to this channel Code of Action. Then only you can participate in community posts like this. So first of all, let's go to the website mongodb.com. If you already have an account, go for sign in. Now for those who are not familiar with this online MongoDB server, I'll be explaining how to create one for free. Now first of all, click on try free here. Now the steps that I'm about to show you will be different in future because this interface of this website will be different from time to time. But you will be fine if you follow these steps here. Now let's sign up by providing these form data here or you could sign up with your Gmail account using this button here. So I'll be using this Gmail account here. Now accept these terms and policies. Click on submit. So here we have the welcome message. Just beneath that we have some questions to answer. Finally click on finish. Now select this free trial option. Click on create. Don't bother much about these cloud providers and then the region near to you will be selected by default. Stick with default options if you are not an expert on these terms here. Finally, click on create cluster. So finally, here we have created a MongoDB cluster. You could see the success message popped here. Now it is asking for further credentials and etc. We can discuss that in a bit. Now go to this database. So here we have the default cluster, cluster zero. Now click on this cluster. Now here we have the collections tab. This is where we store data from our application. We'll do that in a bit. Before that, we have to provide some initial configurations. Inside this left side menu here, you could see network access. Click on it. Here we have to provide an IP address from which we access this online DB. If you have a particular IP address, you can provide that here. For now, I will just use this option here, allow access from anywhere. So it will be having this zero IP address. Now, since I'm using this cluster for a demonstration purpose here, I will check this temporary option so that this cluster will be deleted within one week. You don't have to check this temporary option if you are looking for a permanent cluster. Finally, click on confirm. Once it is done, go for this database access. 
Here we need at least one user to connect with the DB. Let's create a new user. Username will be something like admin password 1234. Now we need to assign a role for this user. So I will select that from this built in rules. Click on add built in rules. I will select this role for read and write operation. Finally, click on add user. Now back to the database. Now let's try to connect with this cluster from our Node.js application. In order to show you the source code at maximum available zoom in level, I will expand this VS code to the full screen. Then I will usually go for the Zen mode for that you can use this shortcut. Hold control then press K, release both of them then press EZ. So here we are in Z mode with less distraction. Now to see the explorer from the ID you can use this shortcut control B. Now inside this app structure, we have this JavaScript file DB. Inside that, we'll be establishing the MongoDB connection. So let's create the file db.js. First of all, let's import the package mongoose. Now inside this variable, I will be saving the URI to the cluster that we have just created. In order to get the URI, click on connect. Then select this option, connect with your application. So here we have the corresponding URI. Copy to the clipboard. Let's paste it over here inside a string like this. So here we have the default cluster name cluster zero. Here we have the one and only one username admin. Now here we have to provide the exact password one, two, three, four. Now after this mongodb.net forward slash and before this question mark, we have to provide a name for the DB. Inside this cluster, we have not yet created a DB. We only have the cluster cluster zero. Inside this collection, click on add my own data. Inside the API, we'll be dealing with employee records. So I will name this DB as employee underscore DB. And the employee records will be saved under a collection with the name employees. Click on create. So here we have the DB. And under this collection, employees will be adding employee records. Now inside this DB URI, let's replace this with the corresponding DB name, which is employee underscore DB. Now, in order to establish this connection, we can call this connect method. As a first parameter, we have to pass the URI. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to export a function by default. So here we have the anonymous function inside that. I will call this method and we'll be returning the promise that is returned from this connect. And let's import the same inside this index.js. Let's separate the local imports like this, just to differentiate from the package imports at the top. So let's import the anonymous function as connect db. And we could import that like this. And by default, it is returning an anonymous function. And we have assigned that to this connect db. Now, in order to establish the connection, we have to call the method connect db. If it is successful, we can handle that inside this callback here. If there is any error, we can cast that here. Since we are returning the promise from the db file, this root index file could easily extend the success and error callbacks as per our requirements. Let me explain. Once the DB connection is successful, we have to print the message DB connection succeeded like this. Here we have already started the server even before connecting with the DB. Now it is better to start the server after establishing the DB connection. Since we are handling the promise inside this index.js, we just need to move this listen method invocation into this success callback here. Hope you understood my intention here. We are already running the server inside the terminal here. Inside that, you could see this deprecated warning. In order to hide that, we have to add few more options while connecting with the DB here. You could see the same inside this connect window that we had inside this pop-up window. Check this option here. You could see these options for URL parser and unified topology. We can't use the exact code here because they are using a different package. So let's copy these options. And let's pass that as a second parameter inside this connect method. We only need these two properties. So let's remove this last 
Servo API property, save this back to the terminal. Even after that, I'm getting this deprecated warning message. In some of the old versions of the package, we have to provide these options to hide the warning deprecated warning. In this case, we have a different deprecated warning and it is only uh, shown in the latest version, Mongo 7 version. So in order to hide this warning, we just need to call this method to reset this strict query feature. So I will do that here. Now let's check whether we have the same warning or not. Boom, that's it. So here we have successfully established a connection with the MongoDB. Now let's create this employee controller here. For that, first of all, we'll be creating a new folder called controllers. Inside that, we can add this controller file. Employee.controller.js First of all, let's import this express package in order to make use of HTTP verbs, get, put, post, etc. We have to create this router object here by calling the method router. Now, in order to make a get request, we can call this get method like this. So here we have the corresponding path, just a forward slash. Then here we have the function to handle the request with these two parameters, request and response. Now, in order to interact with this DB employee DB or the collection employees, we'll be creating a corresponding model class as we can see here. So first of all, we need a folder called models. Within that, we have the model employee. Now, first of all, we have to import the mongoose package. In order to create a model, we can call this method model. As a first parameter, we can name this model like this employee. Then as a second parameter, we can pass the schema, which is the structure of the data that we are going to save into the DB collection. So related to the employee entity, we have these properties, full name, which is of the type string. Then we have position, location, and salary. The corresponding type will be number. So here we are passing the schema as a second parameter. Now as a third parameter, we can pass the name of the collection that we want to use for saving data related to the model, which is referring to the existing collection here, employees. But in this case, we don't have to explicitly mention the name of the collection. By default, this method will use the plural of this model as the collection name for the model here. So the data related to this model will be saved to this existing collection employees. Now I will export this model by default like this. Now back to the employee controller. Now with this get method, we need to retrieve all of your records under the employees collection. For that, normally this is what we do. First of all, we will import the model. Since we are inside the controllers folder, use double period so that we can get outside this folder controllers. Then outside that we have this folder models. Inside that we have this model file employee.model.js. From that we are importing this model which is exported by default. Now this is a common convention to name models using Pascal casing. Instead of this, we have to use Pascal casing meaning each of the word first character will be uppercase. So this is the common convention. Now, in order to retrieve all of the existing records, we will call this method find. We can handle the success callback like this. And if there is any error, we can handle that inside this catch block. If there is any error, we will print that inside the console like this. Now let's handle the success response. We have a single parameter data which is returned from this uh, method find. So it will be an array of records from this employees collection. So we just need to do this response dot send method can be called into that we can directly pass the data. So here we have a get verb method to retrieve all of the existing records from the employees collection. Now let's check whether it works or not. For that, first of all, we have to export this router object here and then import the same inside this index.js employee routes and let's import the corresponding controller file. Now with this employee routes, we can configure routing for the application by calling this app.use method. First of all, we have to provide the base path. It will be forward slash API forward slash employees. And then we can pass the employees routes. So basically this application is hosted on the local host server within this port number 3000. So in order to make a get request to this get verb method here, we could do this. 
localhost 3000 then we have api forward slash employees sorry employees api forward slash employees and then inside this controller we have this forward slash let's append the same at the end here hit enter boom that's it so here we have the empty array returned from the collection there is no record inserted into this collection employees so the get verb method is doing its job now let's look how to insert new employee records into this employees collection here for that we can call this method post path will be same and here we have the function to handle the request now the object or employee object that we want to save will be passed within this request body like this and it will be converted to a json object because of this middleware here so let's look how to insert the same into the mongodb collection for that we just need to call this method create from the model as a first parameter we have to pass the object which is the inside this request body property and we'll hand the success and error callback like this here so let me copy paste that here now let's check how this post web API method works. In order to test or verify web methods other than get, we need an external software like this postman here. You can easily download this software from this website, postman.com, through which we can make any type of HTTP request. So here is the corresponding software interface. Let's make a post request. So select post from this drop down. The URL of this post web API method is same as that of this get. So I will copy that from here, paste that inside this URL session. Now switch to this body tab here and then select raw, select this JSON format. So here we have to pass a JSON object containing the details of the employee that we want to save inside this MongoDB collection. For that, first of all, I will copy the corresponding model from this model class here and let's paste the same. We have to wrap these property names inside the JSON with quotes like this. So select the property, then type the quotes, double quotes. And let's provide the corresponding details here. So here we have the new employee Eva Elliot. Now let's make this post request. For that, you can click on this send button. Boom, that's it. So here we have the return object from this success callback here. Now let's check whether it is inserted into the corresponding DB here. Refresh the page. So here we have the properties that we have passed. And here we have the ID underscore ID to uniquely identify the records from the collection. The same object is returned inside the response. Now let's make this get request again. Refresh this page. So here we have the array containing the inserted object. You could make the same get request from this postman. Create a new tab. Just paste the URL. Click on send. So here we have the array containing the newly inserted employee object. Now you see here we have the status 200 meaning okay everything that we meant with this uh, web method is successfully executed. You could see the same inside this post response also. Now as per the common convention, instead of returning a status 200, while creating a new record, we have to return the status 201 indicating a new record is created. So instead of returning this object as it is, I will do this status and we will pass 201 indicating the record is created inside the web API. Now we can return this data inside this method JSON like this. In order to verify the same, let's try to insert another employee. So I will modify this request body here. Click on send. Boom, that's it. So here we have the status code 201 indicating a new record is inserted. And here we have the corresponding employee, Daniel Hecker. Let's verify that inside this MongoDB collection. So here it is. Now I would like to apply some best practices into the application. Before that, it would be better to explain those best practices if we implement one more get verb method to return a specific employee with the given ID. So let's copy paste this get verb method. This time we have a query parameter ID. And in order to retrieve a specific employee with the given ID, 
instead of this find method we can call this method find by id now the id that we have passed through the url can be accessed with this request parameter so here we go request.params.id now since there is a possibility of not having a record with the given id we have to handle that inside this success callback here so let's expand this success callback if there is no record with the given id then this data returned from this find by id will be null so i will do this will only return the data if data is present meaning data is not null if it is null first of all we have to set the status code as 404 meaning not found and then we'll be passing a json object like this error is equal to no record with the given id let's concat this id here that's it now first of all i will make this get request to retrieve all of the existing records now we are going to make a get request to this route here to return a specific record with the given id for that we just need to pass this id after this forward slash like this let's make this request boom that's it so this time this get verb method with the id is consumed since there is a record with this given id it is returned inside this response now let's change this id inside the url and let's send this request again we are not getting any response if you check the command prompt you could see the exact reason see cast to object id is failed this underscore id which is the primary key of these records inside the collection can't be any string it should be following the criteria mentioned inside this uh, detailed error message so these are the requirements to be a valid id or object id of the record so first of all we have to check whether the past id is a valid object id now in order to validate the id passed to this get verb method first of all i will import this object id from mongoose so here we go object id first of all we have the import statement for the library mongoose inside that we have types namespace inside that we have the class object id now we can call the method is valid from this object id class like this is valid inside that we just need to pass the id like this so if it is not valid we can return the response like this first of all we'll set the status 400 meaning bad request this status code will be returned from the server api when we pass invalid data in a request and we'll pass a json object with the error message given object id is not valid we will only retrieve the corresponding record if the given id is valid now let's check whether it solves the problem the server is already running so back to the postman let's try to make the request again with the new changes boom so here we have the status code 400 given object id is not valid the proper id is this and we got the corresponding record already now let's try an id which is valid according to mongodb object id restrictions that's it we got this it is for not for not found meaning the record that we are looking for is not there inside the collection so first of all it will check the id that we have given if it is not valid we will get the bad request response with this error message if there is an employee with the given id we will get the corresponding employee details if there is no employee with the given id we will get this for not for not found response so far we have three web methods now before implementing the rest of the delete and update operation let's apply some best practices to organize this controller here now first of all i want to define an object with generic methods which implements cred operations for a given model so first of all i will define the object with generic functions and then later i will explain how it works so as per this app structure we need one more folder called services so i will create the folder here called services and inside that we will have this file index.js inside that i will define this function generate cred methods for this method we have a single parameter model as I already mentioned, it's a common convention to use Pascal casing for models. So I will use the Pascal casing. Now inside this method, we are returning this object. So first of all, we have this method get all. For this method, we don't have any parameter. 
Now inside this method, we just need to return all of the records for the given model here. For that, we can call the find method from the given model. This will return a promise. So we'll return the same promise back to the caller from this get all method. Since there is only one statement inside this method, we can even simplify this method like this. Now let me duplicate this. So here we have get by ID method. For this method, we need a single parameter ID. And here we will be calling this method find by ID. Into it, we will pass the ID. Now let's duplicate this for the insert operation. So I will name this method as create. Corresponding parameter will be record object, which is to be inserted into the model. So we have to call this method create and let's pass the parameter record here. For now, this is enough. We have to add two more methods that we can do in a bit. Now, along with defining this function here, let's export the same. So we could do this exports dot generate cred methods now we have defined the generic method here let's use the same inside this employee controller so here we go from this service class forward slash index dot js since we are importing the method from index dot js we don't have to mention that here it will work even if it is not here it will be assumed by default now from that we have to import the method generate cred methods so here we go employee cred we will call this method into that we can pass this employee model so this generate method will return this object having these methods defined here and these models will be replaced with the model employee model that we have passed now in rest of these web methods in order to retrieve all of the records we could do this employee cred dot get all method can be called since it is returning the promise from the corresponding mongoose method, we can use the same success and error call back like this. Now in order to retrieve a single record with the given ID, we can call this method employee cred dot get by ID. Now in case of this post operation, we can do this employee cred dot create method can be called. So in this way, these generic methods could be reused in different controllers with their respective models. So let's go for the next change. Now in order to implement rest of the operations like update and delete, we have to define the routes like this. Router.put can be called for update operation. And here we have the corresponding path. Inside the path, we have to pass the ID of the record which is to be updated. And then here we have the corresponding handler function. Now for the delete operation, we just need to replace this put method with delete. Now in verb method with path containing the ID, we have to validate the ID like we have done inside this get verb method here. So let's find a common way of validating the DB ID. For that, first of all, we have to understand how to handle multiple request handler in a single verb method. For example, consider this get verb method. So here we have the request handler function with two parameters request and response. So this is the callback function in order to handle this request here. Like this, we can have any number of callbacks. So let's add one more callback here. First of all, this callback will be executed. Then this callback, if there is anything after that, then that will be executed. So the order will be in the same order that we have provided here. Now let's try to make a get request into this new route. So employees forward slash test. Hit enter. See the request is getting processed nonstop because we have not returned anything as a response inside these callbacks. In order to solve the problem, I will return a string from this first callback. Now I have placed both the IDE and Postman side by side so that we can see both of them in a single screen. Now let's make the same request again. That's it, we got the response from the first callback here. Now let me move this response to the second callback. Let's make the request again. See here we have the same problem, the request is not ending because from the first callback we are not returning any response. So the request is trapped inside the first callback. In order to solve this problem, we can add a third parameter to this request handler which is next. So with this parameter next, when a request is having multiple callbacks like this, we can hand over the execution of the request to the next callback in the order. So in order to pass the execution to the next callback in this order, you just need to call this next here. That's it. 
and let's make the request again boom that's it so in case of a web method having multiple callbacks like this with this next parameter we can transfer the request to the next callbacks there are a few other benefits of using this next method we will discuss that in a bit so let's do the same for this get web method here i'm going to define a separate request handler in order to validate the id and then i will paste that request handler just before this request handler here so i will do that inside this folder middleways okay middleways inside that let's create this file so here we have the function validate db id having these parameters request response then the next method let's copy paste the same from the controller in order to switch from files inside this project Instead of this explorer here, you can use this shortcut, hold control, then press P, then just type the name of the file like this. Okay, let me cut this. To switch between open tabs inside the IDE, you could use this shortcut, hold control, then press tab. So here we have the index from the middleware and let's paste it over here and let's copy this object ID in post statement. So if the validation of the ID fails, we'll respond with 400 status code, meaning bad request, and we'll provide this error message. Else, we'll call this next method, meaning the DB ID is valid, so that we can go for the next request handler or callback in the same web method. Now, instead of default export, I will use named export, meaning we are exporting an object like this, and we'll export this method validate ID. Now back to the employee controller, let's import the same here from middleware's. We don't have to provide the name of the file because by default it will search for the index file. And let's import the same here, validate db id. Now we just need to provide this request handler just before this callback here. Let's remove this else part, that's it. See. First of all, the request will reach up to this request handler and from there, it will validate the ID. If it is not valid, it will return a 400 bad request. If it is valid, then the request will be hand over to this second callback here. Now we can reuse the same request handler for any web method having a DB ID, not only just for employee controller, it is a common method. So I will do the same for this update and delete operation we have not yet implemented its corresponding request handler here we will do that in a bit now like this request handler i'm going to define one more request handler to respond with for not for not found error when the id is not present because it can be reused in other web methods having the id like this so i will name the function as raise record not found error in order to simplify the name instead of not found i will use the corresponding status code for not for so here we have the function with these parameters request respond we don't need a next parameter here because we are only returning a for not for response so let's copy that from here so we have responded with 404 error with the corresponding error message. Inside the error message, we have also appended the corresponding ID. So let's do that for this error message also. For that, I will use the template string. Now let's export the same here. And we can import that inside this controller. And we could pass that here into that we have to pass these request and response parameters so we can make use of this method when the given id is not found in the collection now before implementing the final update and delete operation let's define a common error handler instead of printing the error message as it is inside this catch block and also if there is any unexpected error the common error handler will be helpful before defining the common error handler back to this test get web method here we have seen the application of this next method when a web method is having multiple callbacks just to transfer the request to the next callback like this. Now into this function next, if we pass an object like this, then it will assume that there is an error during the execution of the request. So let's check that inside this postman. Previously, we got the response because this next transfer the execution to the next callback here. This time we have an object passed to the function. So let's check what's the output here. Hit enter. 
See here we have the response with the status code 500 meaning some internal error has occurred inside the server. So whenever we pass an object to a next function, not only an empty object, any object, the request will be transferred to a common error handler if there is one. Now in order to handle such error response, we can define a common error handler that we can do inside this middleware index file. So here we go, error handler. Normally a request handler will have these parameters request response and if you need to transfer the request to other functions we'll have this third parameter next. But in order to handle another response we need a fourth parameter. So here we have the fourth parameter error. The error object will be passed to the first parameter. So here we have the function body. First of all, we'll set the status as 500, meaning some error has occurred inside the API. And then we can pass the error object here. Error is equal to error. In short, you just need to do this. Now let's export the same here. Now we are going to import this error handler into this root JavaScript file index.js as a middleware. In order to define a middleware, we have to make use of this app.use method, right? Then only we can catch all the error responses from the application at this root level. So here we have the corresponding import statement. Now let's pass that here to this use method error handler. Now make sure that you are passing this error handler after adding rest of your routes inside the application. It can only catch error responses from routes added prior to it. Okay. Now back to the controller. Now let me get rid of this test web method. Now instead of printing the error message here, we just need to call the next method and into that we can pass this error object. For that, first of all, we have to add the next parameter here. Now let's do the same for rest of the web methods. Let me copy this and pasting here. Same for this post web method also. So that's all about the fine tuning. Now everything is properly organized. Now let's go ahead with this update operation. First of all, we have already validated the ID pass to the request. Now let's go ahead with the update operation. For that, first of all, inside this cred methods, I'm going to add a method for update operation. So here we go, update. For this method, we have two parameters, id and the object containing the updated value. So here we just need to call this method model dot find by id and update. As a first parameter, we have to pass the id, then the record containing the updated values. And finally, we have to pass this object with options. There are a lot of options to configure, but for now we just need to set this property new as true. By default, after the update operation, this mongoose method will return the corresponding record object with previous values. Instead of that, inside that object, we need new values after the update operation. That's why we set the new option as true here. Now, before going back to the controller, let me add one more method for delete, which is having a single parameter ID which is the ID of the record, which is to be deleted. So here we go, model dot find by ID and delete. And let's pass the ID here. So inside this object, we are returning all the methods required for a correct operation. Now, basically with a service folder like this, we'll be having separate service classes for each model. So in a real world project, there will be a separate file for employee like this, employee service.js. Now inside this index file, we have handled all the basic CRUD operations. Now, if you need any other query method related to employee, you can add that here and then you can make use of that inside this corresponding employee controller. Now let's implement the update operation here. So the newly added method update will be the inside this return object. We just need to call that here employee cred dot update and let's pass the ID from the request and the new values of the record will be the inside the body request body. Now let me copy paste these callbacks here. Now inside both of these update and delete operation, 
before the actual operation, it will look for the record with the given ID. If it finds such a record, it will go for the update or delete operation. So inside this success callback, if there is an object inside this return parameter, then we can say the operation is successful. So in case of this update operation, it will be an object containing the new values of the record. If data is null, meaning there is no record with the given ID. In that case, we can erase the for not for error. And in these web methods, when we return a response like this using the send method, the corresponding response will be having 200 status code, also called as OK response or success response, meaning the operation that we intended with the web method is successfully completed. We are returning a different status code in case of this post web method because we are creating a new record. In those cases, the best practice would be to return a 201 response, meaning the operation is successful and also we are giving an extra information that we have created the object. And we could keep this error callback as it is. So here we have the get verb method to return all of the employee records. If you want to have a better formatting for this returned JSON object here, we can use this uh, Chrome extension JSON formatter. Currently I have enabled the extension. That's why you could see this interface. If you select the past version, the same JSON object is shown with proper indentation and thereby it's far better for readability. Now let's give a rise for this employee Eva Elliot. So I will copy the ID. Now back to Postman. Let's make a put request. So select put from this drop down. Let's copy paste the URL from this previous post request. And let's paste the ID. Now switch to the body tab here, select draw, then select JSON from this drop down. Now we just need to pass an object containing the updated value. Now we just need to update the salary of this employee. So I will do this. Send the request. Boom, that's it. Here we have the status code 200, meaning everything went successful. And here we have the updated employee details. You could check that inside the DB also. So here we have the updated salary for the employee Eva. I forgot to mention about this extension here. In all of my tutorials, I used to uh, enable uh, this extension dark reader in order to have a dark mode in all of the websites, just to avoid the eye strains from the white screen. Now let's implement the final delete operation. For that, we have already defined the function inside this cred methods delete. So here we go, employee cred dot delete method can be called. Let's pass the corresponding ID from the request. Now let me copy paste the success and error response. Keep the same as it is. If the operation is successful, the corresponding deleted object will be returned. If there is no record for the given ID, then a 404 response will be returned. Now let's try to delete this employee, Daniel. Let's open a new terminal, select delete. So here we have the base URL. And finally, just append the ID of this record. Send the request. We have successfully deleted the employee. Let's make this get request again. Let's refresh the collection. So that's it guys, here we have implemented the CRUD operations insert, update, delete and retrieve in a Node.js restful API with MongoDB. You could download or clone this project from the GitHub repository link given in video description. If you found this video helpful, please consider subscribing to this channel Code Affection. Please like and share this video with your friends and colleagues. Have a nice day. Bye.